Kaya, everyone, and thank you, Richard. Uh, I think you'll all agree Richard's a star and we're incredibly fortunate to call him our club patron. Um, and thank you, Ryan. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, it was an M&M &M impersonation. There was a rubbish bin analogy last year and now he's talking about captains who don't pee in pools. So Ryan's obviously a very conservative man when he's reading the news for Channel 7, so I'm glad we can provide him a forum to be a bit more creative. Um, on behalf of Club President Dale Alcott, the board of the Fremantle Football Club, welcome to the Crown Ballroom as we officially launch our 2023 season. This is one of my favourite functions in that, similar to the Doig Medal, it's an event where we clearly are amongst friends as the front line of the Purple Army gets together. Whether you're a player receiving your first ever Fremantle jumper, or in Nat and Sonny's case for the 14th or 15th time respectively, or you're a staff member, a coach, a club director, a valued sponsor, community partner, part of a coterie group, or just a hardcore fan. We're all here to talk footy and get excited about the season ahead. Thank you all for making the time to join us this morning. It's been a big few months in our quiet little town. The Big Bash final was, well, big. Jack Della Maddalena and the Volk were pretty damn good at the UFC. The Peppers were strong as they sported Posty, who was outstanding. Uh, Bob tells me that Harry Styles turned it on early this week and our man Logan Paul made a decent splash doing what looked like basically kind of nothing. And a red-headed English busker will play in front of 75,000 at Optus Stadium in a couple of weeks to round out what's been a pretty solid summer of activity. The only downside for us is that these artists, performers and YouTubers who all have huge global followings are starting to let the rest of the world in on the fact that we live in what is the best kept secret in the planet. Regardless, and while we've loved having all of the aforementioned here, the reality is that they've essentially been six months warm-up act. The real stuff starts in 25 sleeps, and I know I speak on behalf of everyone in this room when I say, bring on the footy. I'd like to acknowledge and make special mention of some senior members of our partner family who've taken the time out to join us today. Firstly, from our long-standing and hugely supportive co-major partner in Woodside, I'd like to welcome Executive Vice President Tony Cudmore. And joining Woodside at their first ever official club function uh, as co-major partner, I'd like to give a huge Frio welcome to Bank West. We have 10 Bank West ELT representatives in the room, and I'd like to particularly thank Jason Chan, who's unable to join us today, but Rachel Mott and the entire Bank West team. Thank you for your faith and commitment. Our relationship has started famously and we're ecstatic to have, to have begun what we look forward to being a very long and fruitful partnership for all part parties. Other outstanding long-term partners with us today include our host today in Crown Perth, Curtin University, Sullivan Logistics, uh, McDonald's, RAC, Seven West Media, Telstra, The Galati Group, Southern Cross Oz Stereo, Tire Power, Tab Touch, Hayshed Hill, Rico and Toyota WA. We also have programmed such a long-term and devoted partner represented by John Peary and CUB by Danny Savage today. The combined time of partnership the club has been fortunate enough to share with all of these organisations mentioned adds up to 183 years. For a club that's 28 years young, that's a remarkable number and highlights what an amazing corporate fa partner family we are blessed to have. So thank you, one and all. I'd also like to welcome the Honourable Rita Safiotti, MLA, the Honourable uh, Stephen Pratt, MLC, the Honourable Simone McGurk, MLA, all great friends of our club, along with our close friends and partners from the city of Coburn, who this Friday will join us in hosting our practice match at Victor George Kalis Oval. As always, pre-season is time for anticipation and speculation, speculation around who will take that next step in the year ahead. So naturally, there's a narrative surrounding what heights our clubs might reach in 2023. We, like all of you, are excited about our prospects. However, when you've been around footy long enough, the one thing you do know is that the path to sustained finals contention and ultimate success is not always a linear one. A semi-final appearance one year does not automatically guarantee you one or two extra wins the following season just because you're hurting or dissatisfied. There are 17 other clubs in the most competitive sporting code in the world all trying to striving to improve and it doesn't take much to stagnate or regress in this competition. 2023 also marks the third year of our club's strategic plan, a plan that involves several amb ambitious goals. 
one of which is a premiership in both AFL and AFLW. We remain uncompromising in our focus on delivering against those two targets, along with the rest of the plan. We have and will continue to cop some flack from critics who will pan us if we don't, shed out, set, if we don't achieve all we set out to. This does not bother us in the slightest. When we told our members and fans about our aspirations and plans, it wasn't to get inches in a newspaper or exposure for our club. It was to inform our most important of stakeholders of what we're planning to do and how we're planning to do it. Those of us who have the privilege to work or play for the club do so on behalf of our members. It's a privilege that we ensure drives our actions and behaviours on a daily basis. So you can imagine it seems logical that what are essentially the club's shareholders are fully informed as to the plans and strategies their club is undertaking. It also has the added benefit of keeping us accountable. And while it does open us up to criticism to a degree, ours is a club that would much rather be willing to take a risk as to be one that plays it safe and is silent so that it doesn't um, uh, cop any criticism if it doesn't reach its stated goals. This time last year, we were heading to round eight of the AFLW season. How quickly, season six, how quickly things can change in our industry. We ended up delivering two W seasons in one year, which was a remarkable effort by our people. Now we have the time to prepare for season eight later in the year and we'll do so under the leadership of our new senior coach, Lisa Webb. Lisa is a star of a person and like all of our recruits in recent years, is consistent with and will add to the culture and environment we are creating at the club. She brings an enormous energy for learning as well as a wealth of knowledge to our club for a, and a process-driven approach to her coaching, which will allow a women's program to flourish both on and off the field. I want to again congratulate Lisa on becoming our third AFLW coach and welcome her back to the Frio family. <clears throat> on the eve of the season, we know it's the big games that get our members and supporters excited. And there are three games in particular I'd like to call out. Firstly, our Len Hall tribute game, which will be a Friday night uh, round six feature against the Dogs at Optus. It's a game that we treasure as our club, and in my opinion, our people put on the best pre-game ceremony in the country, easily. Secondly, I'm pleased to announce that our round eight game against the Hawks on May 6 will be our 21st Starlight Purple Haze game, proudly presented by South 32. Since the game's inception in 2003, We've raised more than $2 million for the Starlight Children's Foundation thanks to the generosity of our members and fans. And the final one that I'm incredibly proud to announce is that an idea that was first raised at board level two years ago will finally come to fruition this year in Sir Doug Nichols round when our football club will be referred to as the Wally Up Football Club. Wally Up is the Noongar country in and around Fremantle and similar to the lead of Melbourne renaming to Nam last season, we will be referred for the two, will be referred to as Wally Up for the 2023 Sir Doug Nichols round. And fittingly, we'll face NAM on May 27 at the MCG to kick off National Reconciliation Week. The Wally Up logo has been designed by past player, life member and current NGA coach, Roger Hayden, and tells of the Wally Up creation story. It will take over all of our channels in those weeks and our coaches will proudly wear the Wally Up polo for these games as evidenced by our model up on the screens. I want to thank Roger for his work creating the logo, as well as a very special thank you to our RAP external advisory group who have provided valuable guidance along the way. The journey to a premiership for any club is akin to scaling a massive mountain with the ultimate goal being, of reach, uh, being to reach the summit. To reach that goal, you clearly need extremely talented, capable and committed mountain climbers who are willing to take calculated risks to succeed. They also need a gun support crew to provide them with the resources they need to get there. The path you take to reach the summit won't always go to court according to plan. There's no direct route as such. You might go up and down, back and around at times, but with the right people and the right mindset, the overall trajectory over the extended period is up. We feel we've commenced our climb as a club and our strategic plan acts as a roadmap that can help us reach the summit. Our AFL team's growth and development from last season was bolstered during, during the trade and draft period. Our strategy of building through the draft with character and culture at the forefront of our priority list is one we firmly believe will deliver. A side note, it's worth noting that there may be a time this season, hopefully sooner rather than later, where we could have four of the top 10 picks from the 2019 draft in Luke, Hayden, Caleb and Liam 
running out together. If you think you can add the polish and experience of Jago O'Meara in the already performing midfield, along with a pretty handy recruit wearing the number seven up forward, we feel the potential for this list for 2023 and beyond is significant. To that end, I'd also like to take a moment to pay tribute to and thank Nat for the seminal role he played as our second longest serving captain over the last six years. That is a remarkable shot, Nat, one of your best. <laughs> Nat's inspiring leadership was invaluable during a time when the club was still finding its feet in a new era. With his support and his natural ability to, in his words, lead from the shadows, we know our next group of official club leaders have the right foundations to take our club to where we plan to go. The next captain or captains of this club will be selected within the next week. And it's powerful to know that whomever is appointed will have the overwhelming full support of the Frio family. So folks, as we gear up and get ready to continue our journey up the mountain this season, our unapologetic focus remains on building a club that can compete and contend for premierships over an extended period. We, name, we may not be able to guarantee that we'll get there and achieve the ultimate success this year, but I can guarantee you that we have the people, the passion and the purpose to give it absolutely everything we've got. And regardless of what 2023 brings, we feel we have the critical foundations in place to put ourselves in a contending position for the long term. Because when we do reach the summit, we plan to be a club strong enough to be able to gear up and do it again. Thank you for all of your commitment, support and passion for your football club. The unmistakable alignment that we have with all of you in the room will play a massive part in us achieving our vision of being a brave, strong, successful club, leaving a powerful legacy and holding true to the anchor. Can't wait to see you at the footy. Go Freya.